All right, Coach. A crucial non-conference contest just because of what it means for Super Region 2, jockeying and positioning with UNCP. Uh, you've won two in a row. How do you keep that rolling against a pretty talented Braves team that probably will be a little angry following a loss to the University of Charleston? Well, I, you know, you first of all, can't worry too much about what's going on with them. We got too many battles right here on our on our own front. Uh, we uh, <clears throat> definitely uh, are looking uh, to keep improving, and uh, that's always been our theme here. You know, is get better every week, and and I think uh, we have the last couple three weeks we have improved some, and so uh, we. Uh, uh, know that we've got a very, very uh, daunting task this week because we got a, a long trip with a, not a very good place to play, uh, uh, meaning that, you know, they got their student body right behind your bench. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, 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 there's a lot of uh, uh, possible distractions. Uh, and so I think uh, the key is, uh, how much, uh, uh, you know, how much we have grown and concentrated and uh, to, uh, you know, to keep uh, keep the maturity level uh, rising and still uh, have any kind of a setback at this time. And I think uh, that's, that's very important to us. What do they do offensively? They've got, they've been using two quarterbacks at, different points, but Luke Charles seems to be the, the primary. But what what challenges they pose on offense? Well, they've uh, <clears throat> they've they've mixed it very well in the past against us and uh, they've run it uh, very effectively and they've thrown it very effectively and it's a very interesting passing game in the fact that they've got a lot of uh, stick patterns, option patterns, uh, which are hard to handle because they're five, six, seven yard patterns. Uh, and then, uh, and then they'll turn around and go vertical. They'll go four verticals on you, and, and so uh, it's a it's a it's a tough combination, and you have to be able to to um, manage all those uh, the stick patterns, uh, you know, and the option patterns. You probably would like to be a man, but you don't want to be a man in the four verticals. And so, yeah, you know, if they'd holler and tell you what they was going to do, then it would help us a whole lot. But uh, it's a, uh, it's, it's a, uh, it's, it's a challenge and uh, it's a challenge. It's going to be a challenge to our defense, especially when we've lost uh, a couple of starters last ball game that we're really going to miss. Is there a player that stands out for them offensively that uh, is one of those, those players that could give you a, some trouble? They've got an exceptional wide receiver that's caught a lot of passes that, um, uh, that, can stretch you vertically and horizontally, and, and it makes makes it tough. Uh, I think the quarterback, uh, at least uh, last year against us, was was very very uh, exceptional, and uh, they got speed. Uh, their team speed is probably the best we've seen this year, and so you know speed uh, against us right now is uh, is uh, it it uh, it challenges us pretty good because uh, we we're lacking in some areas and so uh, I think it's going to be uh, uh, a great challenge for us. You talked about your kids maturing over the past two weeks. How how have you seen that? Well, uh, mostly in not being up and down, uh, playing a little bit more on a level keel and not letting circumstances dictate how we respond, uh, but us dictating our circumstances. And uh, kind of like life in it. Because uh, in life there's going to be a whole bunch of circumstances and a lot of things that happen that we don't understand, that we don't like, and we have to decide whether we're going to uh, live through that in a, in a way that we can grow from it or whether we're going to back off and let the circumstances uh, uh, put us on the roller coaster. And so I think that's the... Uh, uh, we've been a pretty good four quarter uh, four quarter football team last two ball games, and I think that's uh, that sure is encouraging to an old coach. It's good to see DeAndre Thomas, David Freeman come in, really have command of the offense. That must have been nice in the second half. 
Yeah, uh, two uh, quality kids. Uh, uh, DeAndre is, uh, uh, has got the personality of a quarterback, very even killed, uh, uh, <clears throat> likes to uh, – uh, uh, likes to not not be distracted and does a pretty good job with it, and uh, uh, and is a capable thrower. I hated to see us uh, drop the pass there the other day, and uh, and then uh, tip uh, you know miss one and give get an inter interception. You know that wasn't his interception; that was the receiver's interception. And uh, but uh, uh, and then David David's just a quality uh, uh, team player. Uh, he's the ultimate team player now. That doesn't mean he doesn't want to play. He wants to play. In fact, is if you'll notice, we've we've put David Freeman on the field in a lot of different positions uh, on 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 special teams, and uh, uh, he uh, uh, he's he, he'll find a way to help the team some way or another. And we're glad to have him on our football team. Is that a rewarding time of the game for a coach when maybe you have a large lead, some of the fans are tuning out, but you get to see some of the kids oh, that yeah. don't always get to hit the gridiron, they get to play some meaningful minutes in a Carson uniform? To me, it's one of my, it's one of my better satisfactions is to see kids uh, get a chance to play and then make something out of it uh, when they do get a chance. And uh, especially those guys that so unselfishly have served – uh, the starters and the backups for all, you know, for the whole season just about uh, because we went the first four ball games and they didn't get to play much. Now, thank goodness, last two ball games everybody's got to play, and that's uh, very, very rewarding to me to see them get some fruit from all their intensive labor that we asked them to do every day on the football field. It, you say it's rewarding, but certainly they, they stick with the Eagle way through and through. Hey. What's that mean that behind the scenes they've they've been willing to attend church? They've been willing to walk in the Lord's footsteps. Well, you know the Eagle Way. We hope it's the Lord's way, uh, which means that uh, uh, that if you're waiting to see results before you act out, believing that the results are going to happen, then you probably are in trouble. And uh, so, you know, they're acting out. Uh, one of these days we're going to get to play. And by faith, they're out there uh, working very, very hard and expecting uh, something good to happen in their lives. And, and we've been promised, you know, that uh, uh, if we'll uh, do positive things, if we'll uh, do the things that we know we're supposed to do, that the Lord asked us to do, then eventually we'll get some victory from it. Uh, we'll bear some fruit. Uh, fact is, I think I understand the scripture to say if uh, uh, if you uh, abide in me, like the like the vine and the branches, if if you'll abide in the in the Lord and hang in there, then eventually you'll bear some fruit. So uh, that's that's not that's not a bad promise for all of us. Looking at UNC Pembroke's defense, they've caused some chaos in games past. They forced nine turnovers in a victory against Wingate earlier in the season. It seems like they're a little opportunistic with 20 takeaways on the year. What what, what do you take away from the Braves, Steve? Well, <clears throat> anytime a team's got two-to-one turnover ratio, uh, they've only had 10 and they forced 20. Uh, that's not bad. In fact, is, um, if you want to look at one statistic that probably determines a whole lot of ball games, that and hidden kicking game statistics, uh, those may decide more than anything else uh, who wins a ball game. Of course, you know the number one decides is who who scores the most points. But uh, uh, but uh, it's interesting to see how uh, turnover ratio really really decides. Uh, or you can look at that. Fact is, I've experimented with it before. I, before I ever look at scores, I've looked at see who had the most turnovers, and it's probably about seventy five percent of the time that, that team wins the ball game. You talk about the kicking game, though. UC was able to use that to its advantage with a kickoff return and a pump block uh, for a touchdown. Uh, you, your special teams have improved vastly from the Catawba game to uh, the North Greenville game, at least in terms of kickoff returns. How do you keep that rolling? Well, uh, our overall kicking game, uh, I was very disappointed uh, uh, 
week before last uh, against Catawba. Very, very disappointing. Uh, this week it stepped back up. And uh, uh, we had made some pretty good progress in, in, in areas of the kicking game, kickoff return, one of them. And, uh, but we're not as consistent as we need to be. And, uh, of course, uh, we have yet to turn uh, Jason Brown loose on a punt return. Uh, of course, last week we saw all kinds of uh, wacky kicks and, you know, and, and we were just fortunate to catch them last week. And uh, so uh, this week it, uh, playing against a team that has very dangerous returners. Uh, return to kick off uh, – you know, Charleston ran a kickoff back for a touchdown, and then wasn't long after that, then Pembroke returned one for almost a touchdown. And, uh, and then they got a punt return that's averaging 16 yards of return. Um, that's uh, three times what we have. And so we've got to, uh, we've got to try to uh, neutralize them, and hopefully we'll keep – I'm looking forward to – just getting a kickoff return or a punt return for a touchdown. I, one of these days, that's going to happen. Anything else? All right. Thanks, Coach. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.